high latency alternatives to SSH, and your USB rubber ducky tips. All that and more this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. My name is Shannon Morris. It's your weekly dose of techno lust. <laughs> I like how you just like walk Thank into you. the frame. Thank <laughs> you. Hey, I got my DEF CON 21 wireless build oh, shirt like on. Oh, That's very Rocking cool. It. Yes. So, we have some exciting stuff happening, right? We do. Uh, by the time this airs, I will be somewhere in the Middle East doing fun stuff for hacker documentary stuff. What? And so that's about it. But so more on that later. More on that when we can. And I guess that's going to mean interesting internet connections. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, it's what brought up this segment of the day, which is about high latency alternatives to SSH. Obviously, I still need access Ooh. to all of my stuff back home. Of course, but SSH, SSH sometimes kind of will kick you off if you don't have good internet, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've had problems in the past, especially like Hack Across America doing some stuff with like satellite modems and such. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is a really fun one. I can't believe we haven't talked about this in, uh, on Hack 5, but it's an awesome utility. But first, before we get into Mosh, mm -hmm. I noticed that you have some goodies over there. We do, yes. I'll go ahead and read the letter, and I'll give these stickers over to you, Thank sir. Thank you. So what do we have Pretty here? cool stickers, oh, actually. Cool. Oh, wow. OK, so this is from David. David says, here are a few stickers from my place of work, the Lunar and Planetary Institute. Enjoy or pass them along. That is just Thanks about the, the coolest 747 I've ever seen. Been enjoying it, learning from it for years. That's so cool. He even sent us his like, PGP key. It's like, oh. Don't worry. Nice. Like, written form. <laughs> nice. Did you send the private one or the public one? <laughs> anyway, yes, public, this needs to go right about here. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. There you go. Awesome. Perfect. Hey, thanks so much. I, I like Very this exciting. one too, and I wanted to mention it Took because a while I was to like, figure what, out is what this? that was. So this one is a boot print on the moon. And on the back it has a little fact that says boot prints on the moon last millions of years. Oh, well there so you go. Cute. See, we need to send up some like street sweepers or That's something cool. to like clean the place up, you know? Right. <laughs> leaving a mess on no, the moon, it's like, people. I kinda like that. Mm -hmm. It's neat. You know, it it's is. like leaving your handprint in cement. When it, I mean, not suggesting that you should do that, but <laughs> carving stuff. <laughs> Definitely yep. saw wet cement at the mall recently. Did and you I put was EEF five two hundred four D six A in it? I'm right. Not, I'm not telling anybody okay. what I put it in. Maybe you didn't. It's well, Easter egg. There you go. <laughs> All right. So the program that we are talking about today is called Mosh, and you can find information on that over at mosh.org. Uh, this is the website for it. Uh, so basically, what exactly is Mosh? It's actually an alternative to SSH that's better at high latency and intermittent internet connections, which is perfect for you since you will be traveling there we to go. the Middle East. And uh, why you would want to use it is because it will it's, it's much more reliable at those like high latency connections, at connections that will drop up and pop back in. And it has a lot, a lot of really cool features uh, that you won't find in SSH, like the ability to roam. And so what that means is that your session is actually going to stay persistent across different uh, connections. So for example... So is that including things like if you're going from LAN to Wi-Fi to a different Wi-Fi connection? Exactly, et cetera, et cetera. right? You know, that's cool. one of those things is I would always use Screen. Screen is an amazing utility. Check out Screen. Uh, but the problem would happen where you, you start a session, say, at the hotel, and then you move to the client site, and now yeah. you're on Wi-Fi, and then you go to the next place. And each time... You have to reconnect. You have to reconnect, which is why I would use something like Screen to maintain those sessions. So okay. re-log in, which is you know, not that bad since you set up uh, public-private key pairs, yeah. so your login is a lot easier on SSH. Uh, but, uh, but Mosh allows you to roam, so that connection um, is going to maintain even though you have different internet connections. So how does it work? Well, it works very similar to the we're talking about it in terms of like it's a it gets you a terminal on a computer. It gets yeah. you a remote access to a shell. Uh, so very similar to Telnet or SSH. Uh, in yeah, that you get those. <laughs> don't use Telnet. Uh, so it's I used to Telnet to hack a printer once. Well, that's fantastic. The printers are still using Telnet. But, uh, <laughs> but it's similar to Secure Shell SSH in that it provides you with that shell. But unlike SSH, uh, you're not just relying on, say, like a byte stream of data oh. coming from the server and having your client interpret that. I mean, in the case of SSH, your client is basically interpreting what it's being sent, and it has to do its best to remember where the text is on the screen. But if there's like an error, well, the server may not know how you're rendering that. And so it's really up to your client to, to maintain that kind of stuff. And so, so when SSH, something goes amiss, 
It, it could know. fall out of sync, right? Totally. And you want to know as a client? Yes. Mm. And that's the big thing about Mosh. That's how it works differently. Mosh is all about maintaining uh, states. So okay. basically, it's the, the snapshots of like, okay, so it's like you and I, we both have, you know, like, doodles and I'm like, okay, my doodle looks like this. And then you're like, well, okay, now my doodle looks like this and I'm putting oh. a mustache on him. And then I'm like, <laughs> okay, cool. I got the mustache right there. And, and we're maintaining that state to make sure that our mustaches don't go awry. Our mustaches look very different. They, well, Although I did just shave mine, so that would make sense. You guys have no idea what I have to work with. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> snapshots are all about maintaining that state between the server and the client. And to do that, uh, they use SSP or the state synchronization protocol. Basically, oh. each datagram is indexed. The index always grows, so it increments number by number, which allows for the roaming. Uh, and so basically, you get seamless connections. And uh, there's also like a heartbeat every three seconds. So for cool. instance, unlike SSH, where your connection drops and you don't even realize until you start typing, and then it's like, ah, broken pipe. Um, Basically, you get this heartbeat every three seconds, and if there is, you know, a disconnect, then your client will be like, "Dude, we we ran into trouble," which okay. is kind of awesome. And we were talking about uh, the authentication and how I like to use screen in conjunction yeah. with public key, private key pairs when I do SSH, so that I don't have to like type in a complex password every single time. It yeah, just of course, goes like that. And as yay handshakes. Uh, yay handshakes. And as long as there's no man in the middle, then all is good. And if there is a man in the middle, it's going to break because you know, public because the private handshake keys isn't anyway. going to be shaking correctly. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so you like what's the really way I nice? Describe that? I like that. I like it. It's like it's like this it's awkward. Like, uh, uh, no. Uh, no, uh, no. Uh. So, <laughs> so what? Well, uh, so what's really nice though about Mosh is it actually uses SSH for the authentication. Cool. So it's like not trying to reinvent the wheel. We already have great stuff on that side. So, so it's why encryption not use is it? going to be as good as SSH is going to give it. There you go. Yes. So let's do a demo. All right. So let's take a look at this uh, this box over here. So uh, I have Mosh installed. If you don't, apt-get install Mosh or whatever you know your particular distro happens to be. In fact, on the um, Mosh website, they list all of the different ways to get it installed for the yes, various platforms. OS X, all every building from source. Of building course. from source, of course. But if you go up, you'll see. You know, Android, Chrome OS, Windows, Sigwin, and Debian, apparently they Arch. are working on an iOS platform as well for this. So for you iOS users out there, you won't uh, be included at the moment, but you will in the future. And what's nice about that is for systems administrators, it means that cross-platform all my devices, I can have constant access to my servers. So I can yeah. be running this on my phone, always have access to the Exchange server or whatever whatever it is that I you know need to manage. Yeah. And I know that like it's always going to be there. Cool. Right, so it's going to be maintaining that state. Yay! I so like this. Uh, installing, as you would on anything, you do need to install Mosh on both the server and the client. So I'm going to go okay. ahead and say. Is it the same install? It is. So for instance, I've got this Debian server up in the cloud. I'm going to just SSH in as root because I'm a terrible person. At, <laughs> so I'll SSH in. And on this machine, Twist Avenue, I just apt-get install Mosh, just like I did on my client. I already have it installed. Great. So let me exit out of this. So you saw for me to connect it over SSH, it was, well, SSH root at whatever. Yeah. OK. You just replace SSH with, <laughs> with Mosh. Really? Yep. And again, same authentication. Same authentication. And it's through SSH, and boom, now we have, right? What? Except cool. the difference is, and this is hard to simulate here in, you know, uh, in the studio, but what's going to happen is, and it's just much more responsive. So that's really there you cool. Go. Uh, highly uh, easy peasy, easy. and then you can use it just like you use it uh, SSH, correct? Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's a nice alternative to, and in fact, if you have like esoteric SSH commands that you need to put in addition to this, is dash dash SSH. So for instance, if you have like a non-standard port, if you've got an SSH server listening on port two 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 two, it would be tac tac SSH, and then you would put in SSH tac p, just like you would with oh, SSH two 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 two. So you can pass the SSH parameters with that dash dash SSH. So you're passing it from uh, SSH over to Mosh. Exactly, and so awesome. Mosh is just using SSH to do the authentication, That's and really then cool. and then after that, it's all UDP based, somewhere between six, uh, port sixty thousand and port sixty one thousand. So, yes, mosh.org, check it out. MIT project, really cool. Um, and let us know if you guys have questions about it because there's lots yes. of really cool gymnastics that you can do with both Mosh and SSH. Uh, so, would love to hear your feedback. 
And uh, we're gonna be right back after the break with a bunch of USB rubber ducky tips from you guys from a previous episode about two weeks ago, so stay tuned. When you've got that great idea like owning a computer in 15 seconds or less, you know that you need to bring it to the interweb and share it with the world. So please do what Shannon and I do, and that's head over to domain.com. These guys have an awesome domain discovery system that'll help you choose the right domain, and their easy checkout process will have your website up and online in no time flat. And get this, the guys over at domain.com huge fans of Hack5 and you guys, so we have a special coupon code just for you. It's H-A-K-5, that spells Hack5, and it'll also save you 20% at checkout, so check that out, isn't that awesome? Guys at Domain.com are huge fans, and we wanna show them support, so even if you don't need a domain this exact moment, you should tweet them at Domain.com and say, hey, thanks for supporting Hack5 all these years. And when you think domain names, thinkdomain.com. We're now back with a bunch of USB rubber ducky tips, and the first one is from Creostage, who writes, just a small notice, PowerShell does keep your run history, and you can get it by three ways. Number one is running get-history. Number two is checking the file console host history.txt. And number three is simply pressing the up arrow. The first option you have nothing to worry about since it will be cleared once you close the PowerShell window. The second one, uh, the console host history text is kept under the Windows PowerShell uh, history.txt file and folder. And then you can check where your system keeps this file by using the following command. Uh, Darren, do you want to go ahead and run yeah, that command? Yeah, so check this out. This is actually really cool. And I can actually just pull this up in Notepad and you'll see the console host history text right there, and you can see a bunch of stuff that I've done in PowerShell, uh -huh. yay, right? Um, and then the other way is if I just open PowerShell, and then I go ahead and run that command, and that goes ahead and prints out where that text file is. Awesome. And he also mentions to prevent PowerShell from logging any command, you can also use a specific command, which is the set read line option. Darren, I'll go ahead and let you type that one in since you're running that. Cool. So it's the save nothing. Hey, that is an awesome tip. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'm going to be incorporating this into all of my future USB rubber ducky payloads that use PowerShell to hide your tracks. I like that. Yes. Nice. I love awesome YouTube comments like that. Our next one is from Jack Crow, who writes, all this presumes the computer has internet access. That's yes. a very good point. It does, which is why we showed a twin duck payload version of it that basically enumerates the USB rubber ducky as both a keyboard and a mass storage device and then saves the text file back to the mass storage, never needing an internet connection. And you can go check out how to do that on Hack5 Season 15, Episode 3. Season 15, Episode 3. Uh, our next one is from Sandy Starchild, who says, Nano is the best text editor. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Square Root says to obfuscate your command even more, you could go and press down Alt Space, down Enter, arrow down, one million times, <laughs> and move the window out of the viewing area. It will move it underneath the taskbar, and then you are still able to type, but see le legit nothing. Yeah, this yeah, is it's actually basically really just like pretending it's a mouse and moving it down. It's a really fun obfuscation technique, so I'll show you right here. Basically, I've got my command window open. If I hold down Alt and hit Space, you get this little uh, context menu, and you'll get that in any window. Now, you notice that there's an underline under M, S, N for minimize, X for maximize. So, for example, I can hit X right now, and it'll you know, make it maximize. If I hit Alt Space again. Welcome to Windows 101, everybody. Right, and hit R, it'll restore. Okay, well, the point of that, though, is if I hit Alt Space and then M, I'm now in this move where I can use the arrow keys to move it around. Well, okay, well, why is that useful? Well, if I do DIR, you'll see I've got a bunch of files here. If I do CLS, it'll clear the screen. Great. So I've got a cleared screen. So if I do Alt Space M, hit down arrow all the way down, and then hit enter, you'll notice I can't actually see the command prompt. It's behind the Windows taskbar. If I now type DIR and hit enter, you see nothing on the screen. It's not until Alt space M, bring it back up to the top, and you'll know that it's not cleared anymore. I actually showed what I typed. It's amazing! Yay! Corpse Devil writes color A in CMD or command uh, to be a hacker, elite hacker. Indeed, color space color a. a. And now <laughs> you're a hacker. It's that easy, folks. In fact, if you do color space star, you'll see all of the different ones. You'll see, you know, is zero is black. <gasps> do, do capital D. Okay, so you want purple? Yes. Okay. Do capital, capital D. Color D. There yes. you go, Shannon. Yes. In fact, you can mix and match these between the background and foreground. So for example, if you wanted bright yellow with fuchsia, FD, oh, it's 
terrible. Oh wow, that looks like a GeoCities website Color I had in the nineties. Four D. Oh, that's oh so worst console ever. It's Don't terrible. ask Seb. Yes, good <laughs> stuff. Thanks for sending those awesome comments, and you guys keep this show fun by leaving awesome comments like that. That's right, um, they do. Now I'm looking forward to all the comments about how actually it's Vim that's the best text editor, but whatever. I like I, Vim. I'm looking forward to those. Well, now I like Vim, now that I know how to use it. It's kind of complicated, but whatevs. All right, so it's now time for the Technolus Photo of the Week. Every single week, we are going to ask you what tickles your Technolus. So you can tweet us, you can Instagram us, you can face blurg it with the hashtag, hashtag hack5 for your chance to win some awesome gear from the hack shop. And today, what are we giving away, Darren Kitchen? Yes, we're giving away the Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano. Very like exciting. We got the stickers that go with it, as well yes. as the new book, Wi-Fi Pineappling, all these awesome guides he to wrote that. getting your Wi-Fi Pineappling on. She yep. edited it, and it's a fun it's book great. that helps you make these two things go together all like, ah. I'm sorry, I haven't slept in a while. Darren's 12. Uh, so <laughs> my choice this week is from Dork Feast at Dork Feast Team. Is that dark? At Dork Feast Team <laughs> on Twitter, and he sends this picture, awesome picture, of a Raspberry Pi mod with a couple of Nintendo controllers and a Nintendo box for his Raspberry Pi. If I click on this, you can also see a little mini Pikachu in the background because, Aww. hey, Pokemon Go. Gotta you know? catch them all, right? I love it. I love the mod. I think it's Super really cute. cool, and I really like that the controller lights up too. I Retro. Mean, that's legit. Love that. I, so cool. I want to know, is that a 3D printed case? Because I've seen a couple of these and I, I love yeah, It's hard to that tell. Retro it's not high resolution enough to see, but right? I mean, why not? And you know, we were talking about that amazing arcade uh, platform that yeah. we just put on uh, this box here. Gosh, what was it? This was weeks Laka. ago. I should Laka. Laka. So I'm wondering if it's running Laka because it's a fantastic emulator. And so I just want to give another shout out to that. Yes. Because uh, it will run on a Raspberry Pi for That's all really your cool. emulating goodness. So Dork Feast, we're going to send you uh, some cool gear from our hack shop. I'll be sending you a DM for that info. Yay. Moving and if you on. would like to grab yourself awesome gear from the hack shop, you can do so by visiting hakshop.com. It's what supports Hack5 directly. We very much value you, uh, all of the support that you guys do it enables us to make really cool penetration testing You gear. enablers. You're enabling the hacking of the Gibsons. <laughs> I really haven't slept in a while. Um, <laughs> HAKshop.com, thank you. You can also visit hack5.org, that's HAK5.org, for all of the news and all of the infos about what we are doing, what events we're going to be attending, and also our shows, so you can stay updated in, on all of the different shows on the Hack5 right. network. Hack5, Threatwire, Metasploit, Minute, uh, tech, thing. tech Thing, Hack, hack tip. tip, really good stuff, uh, as well as you'll find all our contact info if you want to get in on the social stuff there, uh, and the details on when we're going to be at DerbyCon, or TorCon, or Deep Second Vienna, and all of the other fun things that are coming Shoot. up. Check it out, hak5.org, a whole 11 year backlog of episodes. So you've got a lot of catching up to do. And if you've you seen them all, wow. Um, with all of that. It's a lot of episodes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some sleep. I didn't <laughs> sleep on the plane. I, uh, I, my, hi, I'm Darren Kitchen. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> with all that said, I'm Shannon Morse. Trust, trust your technolist. You're Darren Kitchen. Okay. Trust your technolist. Bye! Are you okay? I need sleep. You really have no sleep, huh? I, I ran out of thinks. I used them all. You ran out of all your thinks? No more thinks. If I knock on your head, is it hollow? <laughs> yeah, it's totally hollow. Team Snubs. <laughs>